Hello and welcome to Investors Hangout. This weekly interaction to help you learn and understand savings and investment issues is brought to you by Aditya Birla Sun Life Mutual Fund and Value Research. Now, the government rolled out NPS Vatsalya uh, just a few days back. It's a scheme that allows parents to start saving for their child's retirement even before the child turns 18. So today, let's dissect the pros and cons of NPS Vatsalya with Direndra Kumar. Welcome, Direndra. Thank you. To begin with, can you give us an overview of this scheme, NPS Vatsalya? Because it does sound a little absurd, you know, while most parents are struggling to save for their own retirement and for, you know, funding their child's education. Here's a plan that the government introduces, which is meant to save for their child's retirement instead. So, you know, the biggest advantage of this Vatsalya scheme, uh, which is mounted on NPS, is that it can be opened effortlessly. Just go to any of the, you know, POPs or, you know, go to uh, NSTL or anyone and use the ENPS account. You don't need anything. Just put the child's name and everything that, you know, all, all the parents, they will have his, his details and you can start investing. Mm -hmm. To begin with, you know, even if you are able to put something like 5,000, 1,000, 10,000 rupee on child's birthday every year, that is good enough. What I, th I think the great value of this uh, design is that uh, it can be opened effortlessly from day one and uh, you don't need to open a bank account and get for the prepare for the KYC and other things, mm -hmm. operate the minor account. Second is that, you know, if you do it in some manner, even in a limited manner for 18 years, it is a demonstration of the long term potential of equity, mm -hmm. the great returns, because the, all other investment avenues provided by the government are fixed income, you know, whether it be Sukanya Samriddhi Yojana or the PPF account, which you can open for a minor. They are all fixed income yielding. They really don't demonstrate magic or the potential of, you know, the magic of compounding at a higher rate mm -hmm. of, equi you know, equity returns. That is one. The second is that, you know, uh, I would like some essential improvement, you know, that maximum allocation to equity can be 75 percent here. Uh, why, not is, why not 100 percent? You know, when a child is in, you know, we are investing for a child and that too for 18 years and more or, you know, at least 15, 17 years. Why not 100 hmm. percent? And there can't be a better design than NPS for its low cost and a secure structure. Uh, but uh, I think it is still valuable. I would like a lot of improvements, but uh, this is, you know, it's a good starting point. All right. Another thing is that before the child turns 18, if a parent wants to withdraw some amount, it is only the 25% that they can withdraw, which really, you know, what sense does it make if you want to uh, invest in your child's education, if you can't do that with this money, does it really make sense? Uh, no, that is that it doesn't make sense. And I think that is, you know, this is where the Vatsalya scheme is a good start, mm -hmm. but it needs phenomenal improvement and it, beca it can become very useful. First thing is that, you know, it should have 100% allocation to equity. When you are investing for 10 years and more, uh, having highest allocation to equity will only enhance the performance. Mm -hmm. Second is that, you know, this 25% restriction on withdrawal, this should not be tailored to child's retirement. It should be tailored to or targeted at child's education yeah. because that is like investment in the future. Of course, the government is working towards simplifying the tax policies. Government toward, uh, government is working towards abolishing as many. The new tax regime is mm -hmm. a demonstration of that that simplify, do away with all exemptions. But this is one thing for which I would like to desire an exemption, even if it amounts to violating my core principle of simplifying things. That up to a lakh of rupees of annual contribution to Vatsalya scheme should be tax exempt. It should be a deductible expense for everybody. Mm -hmm. Because this is something which, you know, which every government policy should incentivize people to save for the child's education. Right. And education is becoming expensive. It is no longer an aspirational thing. So, you know, um, incentivizing savings towards that goal. So, Vatsalya needs to be readapted. And that is my desire. That is my wish list. Mm -hmm. And I hope it happens. Okay, so irrespective of whatever uh, the provisions are right now, can NPS Vatsalya be used to build wealth for child? NPS Vatsalya can build wealth. Uh, and build wealth because, you know, once you put your money, the grandparents and, you know, in the Indian framework, in the Indian family framework, 
grandparents are all the more excited about investing for the grandchild mm. than their parents who will be you know going with the with their essential expenses and they may have saving sometimes not and not being able to save so it gives you a uh, you know it gives you a window it gives you a vehicle whereby you can put your money and that will be for long term substantial amount of money will be invested in equity mm. and it will be low cost mm. and over a, any period of 10 15 years i think it it has a very dramatic impact on people's mind when you see that you know the amount of money that you put and this long term long time period mm. the the way it grows so i think it 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 is you know a very promising thing mm. it can be improved substantially and then i think it will become very uh, compelling well, that's about NPS Vatsalya and we hope these changes are brought about to make it more useful. Now, moving on to a viewer's question. Amarendra Kumar says, if I have a portfolio of five equity fund categories, say flexi cap, mid cap, large and mid cap, small cap and a contra or value fund, is it advisable to have more than one fund in each equity category while maintaining the same overall allocation as a way to hedge against AMC and manager risks in active funds? Yes, it depends on the complexity. It depends on the scale. Mm -hmm. So if you are doing 10,000 rupees investment in all the five, assuming equally, uh, then it's fine. But if you're, you know, unless you have achieved a scale, Mm. And it may not be worthwhile because you know then you will have to keep track of 10 funds instead of 5. So once you achieve a scale, it might be meaningful because there is always more than one fund in a certain category which is just as promising. There is never a precise thing that you know this is the best and this is the second best. Mm. You know there is a bunch of good funds and it's very difficult to guess which is the best fund. Mm. So it is always useful to spread your you know spread you know bet on couple of good ones mm -hmm. then just one but then you are or anyway betting on another you know five category mm. and even betting on five categories is also very useful because different components of the market whether it be contra or large and mid and small uh, all the segments of the market they are cyclical mm. they will do sometime they will do well sometime and exactly for for that reason when something is doing well the opposite is also true when mm. small caps and the mid caps and you know the aggressive funds are doing well that is when the contra will not do well mm. when they will struggle then the contra will do well mm. or the value will do well so that is why it's, that is true diversification maybe what you don't have as part of your portfolio and maybe it may not be a good time to add that because it's not possible it's the international allocation mm. that is also you should keep an eye on so which means that you will end up with six funds mm. and then having 12 funds may not be a bad idea but make sure that you have this diversification of more than one fund in a, of each category. Once you have crossed 10, 20, 50 lakh rupees, mm. uh, you know, which is meaningful, at a very small scale, don't add too many. Once you achieve your scale, when it, when it is more important to diversify and spread your bets, then do. All right, then that's all we have for you in today's episode. Keep watching the space for more information. If you like the show, do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Take care. Bye for now.